So yesterday, I announced the six-month Linux challenge. And basically, the idea behind this is to choose a distribution that you're not currently on and use it for six months. Now, obviously, this is more of a challenge if you choose a distribution that you've never used before. And that's what I've ended up doing. Now, yesterday, I asked people to choose between two different distros, Redcore Linux, which is based on Gentoo, and MicroOS, which is based on OpenSUSE. One was an immutable distro, which is the micro OS, and the other one is, well, it's basically Gen 2. So, obviously, Redcore won. I, I had really no doubts, but it was actually closer than what I thought it was. When I counted this morning, the tally was 56 to 43 in Redcore's favor. There were a lot of people who wanted to see micro OS, so if you were one of those people, and obviously your choice didn't win, fret not, eventually micro OS will show up on this channel. I'll do a two-day spend in it or something like that, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, but that'll be later on. Right now, I'm focused on Redcore, which I have installed, so you guys can actually see my Redcore install right here. You can see my fancy NeoFetch right there. It says Redcore Linux Hardened Rolling x86-64 right there for you all to see. And I have to say, first of all, the installation was very, very easy. It just, use, it just uses Calamari's. If you've ever used a Calamari's installer, you've used them all, and this was no different. It worked really well. When I installed Redcore on my on my laptop, Calamari's did crash right towards the end of the installation. Just restarting it and doing it over again fixed the problem. When I installed it on my main machine, which is what you're looking at right now, I had no issues whatsoever. So the installation was both easy and very quick. So if you are interested in using Gen 2 but are scared of the installation, Redcore may be the solution for you. And we'll talk a little bit more about my thoughts on that here in a minute. But first, let me talk about how the setup goes. So basically, once you've installed it, you're presented with a standard or fairly standard Plasma desktop. Now, I have been in the middle of an XFCE challenge for the last three and a half, four weeks or so. And uh, that's being kind of put on pause right now because I am in Plasma and installing a GTK based desktop environment on top of this would be a kind of a pain in the rear end. So uh, right now I'm using Plasma. But the point is, is that when you're when you boot into Redcore for the first time, you're presented with a Plasma desktop and it's fairly minimal in terms of stuff that's installed and it just looks and feels just like Plasma. Honestly, you wouldn't know you were using Gen 2 until you started to use the package manager. Now, package management is where Redcore is weird, okay? It, it's just a little weird. So it does come with a merge, just like you'd expect, because this is Gen 2, and it can be used exactly like a merge can in regular vanilla Gen 2. So you can do something like do 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 as, do as emerge. And then this is one that I used earlier because the standard package manager wouldn't work. So I wanted to install Xclip. That's how you would install something using Emerge in Gen 2. It's very, very simple. It does take a little bit of time sometimes, depending on what you're actually installing because it's going to compile it. Uh, but if you are familiar with Gen 2 and you know how to use Emerge and Portage and everything like that, you can use that in Redcore just as you always would. It is not, however, the package manager that they suggest that you use. By default, the one that they want you to use is called Sisyphus. So it's S-I-S-Y-P-H-U-S. Now, I am a history major, and I knew I knew that name from somewhere. Now, Sisyphus was the guy punished by Zeus to roll the, the boulder up the hill over and over again for eternity. And, you know... It's a very weird package manager name. I'm just going to put that out there for two reasons. First of all, the idea behind the whole Sisyphus legend is that it's kind of a difficult task to push a boulder up a mountain, right? Obviously, there's more to it than just that, but it's a, it's a weird thing to call your package manager when that's supposed to be so difficult, right? Also, if you're dyslexic like I am, you guys notice I always mistype things all the time. That's a symptom of my dyslexia. And you know, fat fingers, but Sisyphus is really hard for me to type. I mistype that thing all the time. Now, I've since created an alias, which is, you know, going to save me forever, but it is very hard to type for, for me, so just, it's 
it's not my favorite. Let me just put it that way. Anyways, the point of Sisyphus is that it's supposed to present you the ability to install things from the Gen 2 repositories with a more apt-like syntax. So you could do something like this. You do your do as or sudo, whichever you want to use. Neither one of those, by the way, are installed by default. You have to install one of them in order to to give your your, your user access to root. I could get I could not get sudo to install, so I ended up with do as. It's fine. So you get you use. You access root, then your Sisyphus, then install, and then the name of the package. You could also do something similar to this with uh, uninstall. Now, it's a little bit different. I don't know why they chose uninstall instead of remove, because if they're trying to go with quote-unquote apt-like, remove would have been the word there to use, because that's what apt uses. But uninstall works the same thing. It just unemerges everything. And basically, that's what Sisyphus is. It's a front-end for emerge. That's really all it does. And obviously, it presents some problems. So first of all, it's always going to prefer looking for binary packages. And th that's not a problem. It's probably a good way to go. But if you've ever used Gen2 before, you know that not everything in the Gen2 repositories is offered as a binary. And that means that every once in a while, you're going to come across something that is not a binary that you're going to want to install with Sisyphus. And it's just not going to work. Now, there is a flag that you can use dash dash e build like so if you can spell and that will actually compile the package that you're trying to install even if there is a binary you can use e build to compile it if you want to but if you could get into a spot where sisyphus will not install the binary because it doesn't exist using dash dash e build will actually install it in most cases there have been a couple situations where Sisyphus just would not install anything completely. And that has to do with Git. I could not get Git to install with Sisyphus. I had to use Emerge. And the same thing with Xclip. I had to use Emerge to install Xclip. Why that is, I'm not sure. So Sisyphus for me has been very okay. It's it's kind of a meh package manager. I don't like the name at all. And it does hunt for binaries. And I, I would prefer to use as many binaries as possible just to save time. I don't want to compile everything. So it's been, like I said, it's been hit or miss. I don't mind using a merge, so I'm glad that that's a backup that I can use. And probably over time, what you're probably meant to do is use Emerge more and more and learn more about Emerge and Portage and stuff like that and leave Sisyphus behind. So that's part of the package management story. The other part of it is the regular Gen 2 stuff. Now, when I say regular Gen 2 stuff, what I really mean is stuff having to do with Portage. Now, Portage is the package manager for Gen 2, right? It, it goes in concert with Emerge, and I'm not explaining this right because I'm not a Gen 2 guy, so all you Gen 2 guys out there, I apologize for being an idiot. Uh, but just let's move on. The point is, is that if you're going to do anything that is Gen 2-like with Redcore, you're going to deal with this directory here. The big one is going to be the use tag. So if we go into this directory here and do an ls, you'll see all of these little files. And most of these, and probably all of them actually, are just one line per file. And what these do is set use tags, or use flags, I should say, use flags for every single application that has been downloaded with either Sisyphus or Merge. Now, obviously, the ones for Sisyphus are ones that it's done automatically. So like anything that has the package name, actually, or the location of the application where it's downloading it from the repository, like app or dev or whatever, those ones are the ones that have been automatically created by Sisyphus. The ones that are like the, um, the do as one and the MPV one, those are ones that I've created. And it doesn't really matter what you call these packages because you're it's actually just going to read it from the, the file. But the, the point is, is that you create your use flags here. And this is the second part of the whole Gen 2 thing. This is use flags really are the reason why you'd want to use Gen 2. They're very, very, very powerful. They're also mightily confusing if you've never used them before. I have used them before, and I'm still mightily confused about 75 to 85% of the time. So the basic idea is that the use flags tell Emerge and Portage what to compile the application with. So certain features can be put into the applications or left out of the application. So for example, let's just say you wanted to compile Audacity and you wanted to give it support for Pipewire but not Pulse Audio. 
or vice versa. You could do that with use flags by adding the pulse audio flag and then minus pipe wire or whatever, and it would then ensure that whatever one had minus in front of it would not, ha that feature would not be built in, but the other one would be. That's very, very not well explained, but let's just go ahead and go into this one here, and you can kind of see what a use flag looks like. First, it lists the package. So the first part of this is the repository that it's being downloaded from, or the category that it's being downloaded from, I should say. Then the name of the package, and then it just lists all of the use flags that you want to be built into the application as you compile it. Now, probably about 50% of these I don't actually need. I just listed them all because I didn't know any better. And a lot of times that's pretty dangerous to do. It does try to tell you which ones that you need to use. So uh, pay attention to the Gen2 wiki and all of the packages that it tells you that to install and how to install them. So do a better job than I did. But the point is, is that all of these features would then be built into MB MPV when it was compiled. And if I wanted to have one that was not compiled into it and I want to make sure that it was never compiled into it, I would just add a minus in front of it and then that would ensure that say Jack was never going to be compiled into the package. Now, that's a very pedestrian, amateur way of explaining use tags or use flags. I can't even call them the right thing. So just, <laughs> seriously, uh, talking is, is, is not my forte. It, that's a, like I said, that's a very amateur way of explaining use flags. I'm sure that there is a more technical and correct way of explaining them. So I apologize for not doing a very good job, but hopefully you get kind of the idea. But use flags are the most important thing about Gen 2, at least I think so. And because that's true, it's also the most important thing about Red Core, because Red Core, at its heart, is Gen 2. And that's where I kind of want to leave off, because there's not much more for me to say in terms of what this is, because it is Gen 2. It uses the non-stable branch of Gen 2. Once you have it installed, it acts and behaves like Gen 2 outside of the Sisyphus thing. And you could ignore that completely if you wanted to. You'd never have to use the, the Red Core Package Manager if you don't want to. You could just use Emerge all you want. And it would just perform and react exactly like Gen 2. Where Red Core differs is with the installation. So that's where I have a bone to pick with Red Core. Because, well, not really a bone to pick, but mostly just a, a, a statement. Red Core is not Gen 2. Okay, despite everything that I just said about it behaving exactly like Gen 2 once you get it installed, it's not Gen 2 because the point of Gen 2, the thing that you do with Gen 2 is install it, right? right? That's the challenge of Gen 2. The actual usage of Gen 2 has never been the most difficult thing. Once you have it installed, you've reached and overcome the mountain of difficulty that is Gen 2. You bypass all of that with Red Core. You use a Calamari's installer. It's meant to be a very easy to install version of Gen 2, and it succeeds in that. So far, it has been exceptionally stable. Now, granted, it's only been a day, so I can't tell you that it's always going to be stable, but I had 917 or 971 or 72 or something like that updates when I first installed it. It installed all of them. I did a reboot. It rebooted fine. Usually, you're going to be able to tell if your distribution is going to fail right after install if that initial update fails or causes problems. In my case, it didn't. It worked just fine. So, it has been very stable over the course of the first day. So, kudos to that. And it, it's just been a very interesting learning experience because the really all you have to learn about Gen 2 if you're going to use Red Core is the package manager. So, if you can learn about Emerge and portage and then be happy with the places where you have to kind of insert Sisyphus to make up for your lack of knowledge, those three things would get you through, right? But that is only part of the Gen 2 experience. The biggest part of the Gen 2 experience is installation and you bypass all that with Redcore. Now there's nothing wrong with that. I think that it's great. I think it's... If you've been in the Linux community for a while, you'll remember the fervor of Arch-based distros, right? When Arch was really, truly considered hard to install, 
we just had a, an explosion of Arch-based distros that all claimed to be the easy way to install Arch. We, you know, we had Manjaro and Arco and Endeavor and uh, Antergos and things like this, right? You had all these distributions that claimed to be Arch Linux, but just easier to install than Arch ever was, right? That's basically what Red Core is. And there's nothing wrong with that, you know, scenario. It works just fine. And I'm going to have a good time using it over the next six months. But if you are here to learn about Gen 2, you're only going to get half the story. You're not going to get the installation part of it. And if that doesn't bother you, that's fine. If that's not what you're here for, you know, whatever. But if you are, if you're going to think that you're going to miss out, I would say try Gen 2 first and experience the failure that is your first attempt at installing Gen 2 and then maybe move on to Red Core. So my initial impressions of Red Core so far are that is that it's really good, actually. Uh, uh, the only pr really bad thing that I would say out of the box about uh, Red Core is that it doesn't include sudo or duos. And uh, it really should. If you're going to be an easy-to-use version of Gen 2, it should at least include a, a way to get to root, or at least allow your user to get to root. And it doesn't. So you have to know what to do in order to get that. And that means you have to go into the root, you know, you have to sign into the root account, install do as or install sudo, and then you can move on. But if you don't know to do that, it can be very confusing. So that's probably the only thing that I'd say is like the negative part about, about this. Everything else has been very, very good so far. I've only encountered one thing that I haven't been able to get in installed, and that was sudo. And that's because you, you have to unmask certain packages. And uh, if you're confused as to what that means, don't worry. I'm confused too. I don't have any clue why they continue, why they mask things. I'm sure there's a technological and very sound reasoning behind why they do so. I just don't know what that is, and I don't know how to fix it. Even though I went to the Gen 2 wiki, it explained how to fix it. I still don't get it. I don't, I don't know. Uh, something something else to learn. So those are my initial thoughts on Redcore. This is day one. Uh, I'll be going until August. Now, first of all, don't worry about me making constant Redcore videos. You won't have to worry about another Redcore video for quite a while, probably a month in. Uh, maybe I'll do it a month and then I'll do it maybe midway or something like that. We'll make three or four videos over the course of the next six months. Nothing every single day. I'm not going to spam the channel with Redcore videos, so don't worry about that. If there are things about Redcore that you want to know, let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel's just not be anywhere near where it is right now, so thank you so very, very much for your support. And I don't know why I was talking so very fast there. I don't know why. It's okay. I, um... I seem to get to this point of the video and just forget what I'm going to say all the time. So thanks everybody for your support. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.